Okay, for our last talk before the first break, it's one of our own members again. Uh, it's Kian. Please come to the stage. It talks about are we really so different? Good. Um, today I want to confront you with one question. Are we really so different? Um, we're going to make uh, an experiment, more or less. Um, this is a dollar street. Now take all the people here and distribute them depending on their income. Okay? You will have on the very left side the poorest people here and on the very right side the richest people here. Who of you do think that it's going to be more or less in the middle? All right, good. That's the good. The, well, the answer I expected. That's good. <laughs> All right, now let's take really uh, the people of the whole world. Who still thinks that he's in the middle? Okay, not not a lot. Okay, I caused a bit this reaction. Um, yeah, you're not in the middle. You're gonna be in this in the very uh, the very right side. And now um, we want to see how we can really visualize it. How can we really know if we're in the middle, on the right, or on the left side? And we have this, this woman here, she did a very good project, Anna Rosling, about the Dollar Street. You can check it out, you will see you now what I'm meaning. And she tried to visualize exactly this street. She would send out people all over the world, and they would take pictures of items, of, uh, of the house, of the stove, of anything from the people in the house. Okay, so let's take a look at the bedrooms for the middle income people. If you think that you're in the middle income people, you should have this kind of room. Yeah? <laughs> Normally, I think no one will feel comfortable with that. No one will say, okay, that's my room. It's in China, Philippines, or Nepal. We don't have it here. That's, that's right. But now, um, let's challenge you a bit more. So, first of all, why did I, I didn't show you any room from the US, from the middle income? So, Interestingly, I cannot. Because when you take a look at the US, you will find that like, very, very few homes are really in the middle income in comparison to the whole world. This is the distribution of the income that you would find in the US compared to the whole world in that street. So most of the US people would live from the middle to the right. So now this challenge. Africa or Europe? What is what? The left is Africa or Europe, or the right is Africa or Europe? Who thinks that the left is Europe? Who thinks that the right is Africa? <laughs> okay, that's it. This is Kenya, and this is Tanzania, and this is Romania, and this is Russia. So now it's like a bit like, okay, what the fuck? <laughs> um, of course it's not the whole truth. Um, this is more or less how the street would be distributed. So you will of course have some African people in the very right side, but most of them will be more to the left side from the middle. This is for Asia. And this is for Europe. But still now what we can do is compare in the places where we have a common place where you can still compare with the same income, we can still see how these people, how are the bedrooms of these people, how are the stoves of these people, and so on. And we're going to do that. So, because we won't wonder if we're really so different. These are stoves. We cook every day. Um, and now I want to show you how it's stove in Kenya, Sweden, Mexico, and India. As you can see, for the richer part of the people, it looks the same way. And for the left side, it also looks the same way. There's no, no change. Even though we have different cultures, religions, countries, it looks the same way. Let's take a look at the brush tooth. On the left side, they would brush with the fingers. On the middle, yeah, they start using a plastic uh, brush tooth, and on the right, again, but maybe uh, some more, I don't know. Um, this is what it would look like, but everyone will use the same brush tooth. It happens the same with cleaning <laughs> equipment, okay? With Sweden, the US, so now it's more technical and more automatized, and we have India, Malawi, and Bolivia, and this one is just, I did a mistake, sorry. <laughs> it shouldn't look like that, but... Um, so now we're seeing that the items we use in our everyday life um, are pretty similar. So our everyday life looks pretty similar and it depends on the income and nothing else. 
So now I want to give this question to the audience. Global citizens, is this something we can think of? And if we think about it, is it defined by income? If it is defined by income, is this good? Is this not good? But some other thought that I want to bring in is we have something in common as well. And it's that we all smile in the same language. And now I want to make a question. Is our smile depending on income? I don't know it. Maybe someone has to study that. But maybe it's a question that you can uh, make for yourself. And that's how I want to end my talk. Thank you very much. circumstances in your life are going to depend, it's going to this decide how, how is the frequency of your smiles every day. And that's for me a question, I, I just to bring in some uh, own experience of why I just make this question. I was traveling through Uganda and I didn't have the feeling that people smile less or even more. That's a, that's a, like a bigger question. Do materialized things actually make us smile or is it actually something else that make us, makes us smile? And yeah, that's it. That's why I'm good. And this is why I'm making this huge question. I, I, I don't, know, I don't know the answer. <coughs> I, I mean, of course, she just made the point, and I just wanted to formulate. Yeah. Um, I think you were first. Thank you very much. Um, some days ago, I was in my favorite bar in Munich, and I met a guy um, sitting up opposite to me. He was from Spain, and um, he said he's visiting his brother in Munich. He was moving from Barcelona to Munich, and he said like. You people in Munich, like my brother always wants me to live in Munich, he says he can earn good money here, but as he was watching his brother working here, going to work every day, going back, he says like, my brother, he has no life. And he said, like we were talking in Spanish, he said, mas dinero, menos vida. And, um, <laughs> and, then, and then he also said like, and, like, what about the women? Like, you know, you're a chairman, what about the women? Like, the women are so different in here. I said, well, why? Like, in Barcelona, I talk to women and they start smiling at me. But here, they look at me and they, they feel like awkward. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just, just, I like you, I like you know, because I'm from Barcelona and I came to Munich to study. <laughs> and exactly, I, I would say a similar thing. No, I would, yeah, I would. I have the same feeling that in Spain, at least people uh, again smile more frequently than here. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's the weather or the income. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, still, so it's still a question. Probably the smiles are pretty similar, but the frequency can be different. Yeah. You. Um, actually, there was a, a book that came out two weeks ago called uh, uh, Origins of Happiness, which is basically based on a lot of different studies uh, around life satisfaction. And it was interesting because uh, the rel uh, relationship between life satisfaction and income is relatively weak uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. But there's a bigger relationship also between trust in a country, how much you trust people on the street, how much uh, you're in the social context of people, how much uh, social help you get from other people, and uh, also how much, uh, yeah, um, yeah, also how, how, how mental health is of people. So, uh, in that sense, actually, there's more in uh, what you can learn now about uh, quantification of satisfaction, uh, and, and that's actually a, a good, good book that I can recommend in really getting down to the numbers in satisfaction and perhaps then also. What smiling. is the name again? The Origin of Happiness, okay. and uh, it's basically a big study of, of um, scientific data around um, yeah, statistics of life satisfaction. Nice. Isn't income in, in uh, not satisfactory condition for defining are we same or not? I mean, that's one of the least important things like everybody said to define are we same or not. So isn't your 
your context based on a, a very false premise that income is what makes us similar. I mean, there are traditions, there are cultures which are very different. Yeah. You took a very small part of income to say that we are not different. No, I, I didn't say that. I just uh, made a question and just give you for, for thought. I didn't, I didn't make any affirmation here. I, I'm just trying to show you that there are many things, at least from everyday life, where we can say that actually we do the same. Of course you will have some different cultures, some different religions, and this will also change slightly your, your everyday life, but there is also a big part that is the same. And for me it was a bit, uh, I don't know, if I, I, I still don't know if I like it or not, but it's obviously that when we have more money we have some, the same kind of bedrooms. We, we have the same kind of luxury, we buy the same kind of items, and we're living in a, con, in a society of consumption. And it's, it's, it's interesting to see that, yeah, it, it's like that. I mean, if you have more income, you will consume the same kind of things. And that's, a, that's at least a kind of a fact, at least in this field, that seems to be a, a, a strong correlation. But, of course, what we can do with that is still, I'm not making any final conclusion from that. And you're right, there are differences, of course. All right, uh, thank you, Kilian.